And according to Esther Collins, after Ricardo Calafiori, Arsenal are planning further signings this summer with a midfielder and another for their next priority. So we've talked about a midfielder. Merino is the one that we are really looking at. There's not too many others that have been mentioned or the ones that have been mentioned have already moved to other teams or decided to stay at their team. So next up is a forward, a position causes that a lot of people really want us to sign players. People are talking about wingers, asking about strikers every single day out of the forward. So you think they're looking for just specifically forward strikers or forwards who can wingers who can play as a striker or which one are you thinking that today is looking for right now i th i think this one depends on on many things but i would say that in january february run there when they're drafting um the the the, the when, when they're making the draft they were open to anything and that's why we saw arsenal trying to get um uh Sheshko, Ali Aron in the window and then also we've been heavily linked with Nico Williams. So they were open to three situations. The first situation is you could lose Gabriel Jesus, right? Because uh, right in March, their stories came out from the athletic, very reliable Ghana blog, um, just J James McNicholas saying, if a good offer comes in for Jesus, Arsenal will listen. They are not pushing him, but they will listen. So Arsenal are very open to signing a striker and signing a winger in the same summer because they knew Rich Nelson was going to leave. Uh, eventually, they, he told us, I want to assess my options. ESR has told us, I want to assess my options as well. And Trusted is getting older and Sakan is back up. So I think th the initial plan was we are, we are open to anything. Then um, as time has gone on into the window, They've realized Enketia won't be able to be kept. Rhys Nelson won't be able to be kept, but we will keep Gabriel Jesus. So I think it's now about Kai Havers walking into this, that striking line permanently and Gabriel Jesus backing him permanently as well. So I think the focus right now for Arsenal is going to be either to bring in a player that can play across that forward line. We've been uh, linked with many of those, and we've been told that uh, it would be a priority for Mikel Atia to get a player who is very, very competent, or to bring in a center forward. I think wingers are a little bit tricky for me. I'm not really sold on to uh, the Pedro Neto rumor. I think Nico Williams will go to Barcelona. Rafinha, I'm not sold on to that one. But I think the center forward um, position is one that Arsenal could address this summer. It's one that we might see Arsenal just bite the bullet and go and sign a center forward. So at the moment, I'm going to say um, next focus is, will be a center forward. Unless we can we fail to agree on a deal, then we'll start to you know scratching the surface for a winger. Now, I agree with because in terms of wingers, there's not too many unless they decide to go with players like Bakayoko or mm. they decide to go with players that we haven't been linked to before. Like yes, Harvey Barnes, because he has mentioned Harvey Barnes before. Or he go with the Somerville, or he go with mm. um, Nonto, or we go for a Soli match, or we go for Mitoma, players like that that haven't been linked before. But I don't think those will be expensive as well. But it could, it could happen. Like those are the kind of deals like the Timber one. That could come out of nowhere. Like I remember Tom Yas deal came out of nowhere. Vieron mm. came out of nowhere. So we could hear yeah. um exclusive Arsenal make fast bid for Soli match or fast bid for Bakayoko or something like that. And we, we, we have to wait and see. For me, I was looking for a backup for Saka, but forward players. So one forward player that a lot of Arsenal fans have been flooding your comments, flooding my comments about is Victor Yokores. So mm. the update we had about him. This was a week ago, according to TBR Football. They did say Arsenal and Chelsea are among the clubs that retain an interest in Victor Yokores. Sources with knowledge of the situation have told TBR that they believe his sporting would now consider deals close to £60 million. Now, they haven't yet dropped their price. Their price is around £83 million. So, do you think they're going to be able to sell him for that £83 million, or do you think they're actually going to have to drop to that £60 million for anyone to come in for him? Um, they're unlucky, first and foremost. The market has turned down, turned down ugly and uglier than everyone anticipated, especially the striker market. Because when we were talking about the strikers in March and the strikers in um, April, we're talking about around five clubs needing a striker, Arsenal, Tottenham, Manchester United, and a couple of others. And we were saying, even, even Chelsea, and we were saying strikers are going to be going for like 80 million, 90 million. And we're then we were, by the time we're looking at, at, at strikers and we're like, okay, they're going to be, uh, the striker market is going to be most interesting. It has been the most boring market I've ever seen. Like most boring market. The striker market has been really, 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 really bad. So I think they will look into it and they'll see 
Joshua Zaxi going for 30 million or 40 million euros. Um, the most expensive striker we have seen going for a, a lot of money right now is is, is who? Like uh, the likes of Girassi, pennies, like really real, real pennies. Ooh. So I think yeah, Zaxi cheap as well. Zaxi cheap as well. They will look into it and they will agree internally that the market has disappointed, but you're not going to have another real opportunity to market a player like your careers you're not going to have another 50 season 50 goal season you're not going to have another eight yes. imagine that's a 50, lot yeah, 58. so this is their chance to get the biggest amount of money out of him as they still can so they they know they won't be able to sell at 83 million pounds but 80 million pounds is not bad 75 million pounds is not bad 70 million pounds for your caress a guy that you signed yesterday and you're selling him tomorrow you're literally just flipping like as if you're flip, flipping um you know a, a, a house in real estate business that is actually not bad like you didn't sign him for, for 50 million you signed him for less than i think 30 and now you're flipping in for for, for almost double or even triple the profit Mm. That is good. That's okay, right? So um, I, I think they will reduce the price. They, they, there's no way they're going to sell him at 83. They'll just stay with him. And and these times we've seen that clubs are, 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 are okay and good um, with ignoring talents even in Portugal. Like they have had Marcus Edwards for some time. They have had Inacio for some time. They've had um, Diamonde for some time. And clubs have been linked with them for some time. And clubs are just feeling mm, these, these guys are very expensive. Would rather mm. look elsewhere. Would rather go and sign, you know, cheaper players elsewhere. Yeah, and he's literally the only striker that um <laughs> we've, that is really available. The, all the others are very difficult. We did a stream with Cozy last night, and he asked me the same question, and I was like, I feel like this is very possible compared to all the other strikers. Literally, there's no strikers that have been linked, you know? I just hear this one, want this one, and they've signed Zach Z, Sesco signed a new contract, or staying, or whatever. The striker from Girona, no one has really gone for him. The striker from Feyenoord, Jimenez, no one has really gone for him. You know, all these strikers, no one has really gone for him. We thought there was going to be a lot of strikers available. I, I agree with you. I thought this was going to be a transfer in the way we see Zach moving. You're going to see Jokores moving, Osman moving, maybe even Nicholas Jackson moving, leaving Chelsea, maybe even Jesus and Getty both leaving Arsenal, maybe a newness surprisingly leaving um, Liverpool. We are talking even Salah in terms of wingers leaving. Like we thought this was going to be a transfer with a lot of movements, but it doesn't turn out that way. So for the Jokores one, I think it's going to be a little bit of um, patience. Now, it's not only mm. us who want him. How concerned are you about Chelsea wanting him as well? Because Chelsea already have Kumku, Nicholas Jackson. They've, they wanted um, Sasa, o, o, o or something from Atletico Madrid, the striker. Yeah, I'm think... Omoradian. Is that one? So, are you worried about Chelsea if um, they drop it to sixty million? Would you be worried about Chelsea? Uh, not really, not really, not at all. I think Chelsea this summer have been very clear with their strategy. They want to spend as low as possible. Actually, I'm surprised that Chelsea didn't go for Joshua Zaxi, probably because they have such a profile uh, a lot in their ranks. Um, mm. Yeah, but um, in terms of a striker that's going to go for fifty million. And above, I don't see Chelsea try to do that. They've have, they've have made it very clear they would rather, unless the player is in a priority position, they want to continue with Nicholas Jackson and uh, they want to continue developing him. And they're also nowhere near, uh, you know, big deals this summer, big money deals this summer. Uh, I think they, they they're just you know, trying to make sure that they're in line with PSR and FFP as well. So Chelsea, I'm not I'm not surprised uh, that they're there. But I'm not worried about them. I think they've been linked with every player. They've, they've become the new Arsenal, by the way, um, if people have noticed. When Arsenal are somewhere, Chelsea is there. When Man United are somewhere, Chelsea is there. Their name is being thrown around the way we were under Arsene Wenger. But why, for me, why I wouldn't be even uh, surprised that um, uh, they don't sign him is the new manager in Enzo Maresca. When I look at the kind of project he's building and the, his tactical setup, I don't think Jokaris is the guy. I think he would prefer... Um, there's a reason as to why they are very strong on Samuel Omaradian. He's um, a very, very specific profile of a player. And now they didn't get them. They also tried to sign um, the second striker at Aston Villa. John Duran. Duran. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. they also tried to sign John Duran. They're looking for something specific, but also something a little bit cheap. 
Yeah, I'm um, spot on. So Yokoris, I'm still confident it could still happen. I think if you get Yokoris through the door, it will boost a lot of, you know, confidence the fan base. Of course, yep. everyone is talking about Yokoris, you know? It's right. I know, yeah. like, last season, I'm sure people have not really watched Yokoris apart from the highlights, but the fact that he's got, I still believe, like, getting 43 goals and 15 assists is crazy. That means you have Damn. different styles in your play. His power in terms of shooting is incredible. He can score from a um, couple of headers as well, right foot, left foot. He's a really good player. When you're talking about him and comparing him to York, to Sesco and Ostiman back in May and June, we, we know that he's very good. But someone did say he's just recovered from his injury. Remember, he went through an operation. So are you worried about that as well, the injury? We're not sure about um, how serious the knee injury is. Is it... Um, is it um, brave or stupid to go and pay 80 million for a player who you know is just gone undergone a knee injury that we already have a striker who also has knee problems well listen for me it's about the treatment and it's about the uh, frequency and how recurring is it if it's a problem that can be well researched by our team and we find out that it's not a problem that he has had in the past therefore it's not recurring and it has been treated well as well. That's very, very key. Our medical staff, our medical team should be able to go and, and, and clarify the situation. Do, do we trust this guy to heal completely and become as lethal as he was and play and compete at the topmost level? If yes, I don't have a problem. The problem is us getting a player while some of the information has been hidden. It's, it's one thing I, I fear up for Ricardo Calafiore. He's had this line of injuries Yet Arsenal, for some point, uh, for some reason, made him top priority over a Murillo, who doesn't have injuries, over a Gerald Branthwaite, who doesn't have such injuries. So there's a big question to be had with um, Jokares. Is it just a one-time thing? And even if it's a one-time thing, has it been treated very, very well, right? Your medical team must be able to clarify. If um, he's been treated very well, it's not a recurring injury, bring him in. 